Well, we'll start our podcast uh, looking back at the two games, particularly England's thumping of West Indies uh, over the next 20 minutes or so. And I'm very pleased to say good evening to Adil Rashid. Well, Adil, what, what an extraordinary game. How are you doing? But very well. I just enjoyed watching that. Was, uh, it's an incredible we, start. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't think we could have uh, expected anything. Any better to start, especially with the ball. I thought we set the tone up top with Mo and Woxie and then Tamar, Sergio and myself came in and we both got the, the, the top drop and we couldn't ask for anything better. I just wonder, I mean, there's always a lot of nerves and anxiety and, you know, look, looking forward, I guess, to, to the first match of a tournament. I wonder how you all felt going into that first game. First, hmm. yes. We've not got a great line there, Adil. I think what we'll do is I'll try and fiddle about and see if we can get that better. I know it's it's difficult and I wish we were, we were there, but are, are you still there, Adil? Let's just check on that. Yep. Yep, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I mean, what, what, how did you all feel going into the first game of the tournament? Um, yeah, obviously there's a bit of nerves lying around here, but, you know, we did good preparation, we prepared well, we all are confident in our abilities, and and like I said, today was a, was a perfect start, and that's all we can have. That's what I hope we can carry that on. Let's have a word about Moeen, who I think I'm looking at as, I think he's man of the match there, he's waving his, his, his trophy about. Uh, he's had a terrific game, I mean, to come on, was it always the plan that he would bowl his four overs straight through in that in that power play period, or did it just evolve that way? I think it evolved that way, obviously, you know, when he bowled the first time, he bowled it really well, then he got... I really well, think well. we might, yeah. uh, Adil. I'm really sorry. You go, you go and enjoy the night. But it, it, unfortunately, our line simply isn't good enough to pick it up. But well, well done. Congratulations to all of you. We'll look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. There we go. It's, it's difficult, isn't it? Communications, and it's uh, pretty miraculous, really, that you can put uh, someone on uh, so quickly after the event like that. But anyway, a, a happy man, and uh, it's, a, it's a very good start for England indeed. But I'm looking at Moeen on our screen here. Uh, two for 17 in uh, four overs he bowled straight through at the start and he took an excellent catch in there as well so uh, he picks up the award and uh, a, nice, uh, a nice start for him so we'll just reflect on on, on the match such as it was uh, how brief that it was all the wickets that we've seen falling today around about an average of, of 11 to 12 runs per wicket I think it was that we've seen we've combined both the games together that uh, low scoring match in which Australia beat, uh, beat South Africa but uh, Carlos Brathwaite's with us here, a man who uh, obviously had a massive impact on the final. The West Indies came here, of course, as, as, as champions. We've, we've talked a lot today, Carlos, haven't we, about, about T20 cricket and how unpredictable it all is, and, and, but also how quickly it can change, positively as well. So, I don't know. I mean, what, if, if, if you were the West Indies coach, we'll get a man who was West Indies coach a minute ago, but do you change? I mean, first of all, the, the, the approach of the West Indies batting today, do you... I mean, do you approve of that? Do you think it's the right way to go all, all guns blazing with, 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 with no, nothing in between, really? I mean, all, all out boundary assault or a dot ball, it seemed. Um, you obviously have to change something. You can't walk around just getting skilled up for 55 um, and expect to win the tournament. Um, but I think what was the mentality like? Um, I honestly would just park that game just get back to the hotel as quickly as possible. Hmm. Um, potentially meet up a little later on in the night, have a few drinks, um, and just have an honest conversation, not in a formal setting, but in a more relaxed setting, which West Indians do a lot better in. They'd be more open, a lot more one-to-ones rather than a, a formal public bashing of anyone or the team or the performance. And just start to ask players to open up a bit in one-on-one -on -one scenarios over a quiet drink, um, how do you think we could have gotten better? Because in my estimation, the intent still wasn't there. So yes, the shots look horrendous, yeah. um, but you're blocking, blocking, and then you're swinging. So there's no intent to get the ball off you and play proper cricket shots. And I'm not talking about looking for ones, because that's the other end of the spectrum. When West Indies batters go looking for ones, they look even worse. Um, by talking about hitting the ball along the ground, getting singles, getting fours, because you know that you're good enough 
that even if you fall behind in your 15 off 20 balls that you can then launch an assault and still get to 50 off 25 50 off 27 balls so so not looking for ones l- looking for boundaries but if you can't if that ball isn't right to hit for a boundary then you then you knock it for one correct because yeah. you have positive intent you get into better positions if you're looking for ones all of a sudden you're a bit haunched you don't get as big a stride in you don't get your head over the ball if you're looking to still hit boundaries still without positive intent and the ball is not in your area you use your soft hands you break your wrist either off side or leg so you get off strike but just felt as though today was a case of let's get into the tournament let's block let's bat some balls and you get to the situation then you end up one or five and you think crap a ball that then really isn't there you're going out of your comfort zone and you're going for one you're going for two playing an injudicious shot whereas it could have been easily three or four or five or six just rotating strike yes. rotating strike with positive intent and not looking to just drop the ball and get a single Paul Farbrace is with us too of course the former uh, England England coach uh, well <laughs> the way you make of that Paul uh, extraordinary opening game it, it was it was uh, and, and Carlos is absolutely right I, I think the one thing that Phil Simmons and his coaching team will be looking at tonight when they analyse that and they won't want to spend too long and it is one of them games that there'll be very little said tonight, and as Carlos said, you'll chat with a couple over the next day or two. The lack of intent from the West Indies right from the start would be the most frustrating thing. You know, that they weren't really big shots they were getting out to. And as he said, it was a bit block, block, or oh, crikey, I haven't hit a boundary, I better have a slog at one. But even when they had a go at one, they didn't really commit to their shots. Mm. There was a lot, of, all, all the way through, most of the dismissals in the game have been half-hearted dismissals. You know, there, there wasn't anybody really looking to strike the ball and strike the ball cleanly and that will be the most frustrating thing all of the guys that have got out today and both teams will look at their dismissals and say god that was that really wasn't the way i want to get out that you know that's not being true to myself and really playing the way i want to play the game but uh, fantastic from england's point of view i thought the way they bowled they took the catches really well uh, and they just never allowed the west indies to ever get in the game with the bat at any stage yeah it's just i mean that mowing catch really set the set the tone of 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 events didn't it it was an excellent catch wasn't it i thought milan's was a really good catch running backwards as well uh, i thought you know there's, there's a lot made isn't there of this matchups now everyone's talking about mm. matchups and it, and and basically that's been in t20 for quite some time you try and take the ball as much as you can away from the outside edge of the bat so if people are looking to hit the leg side the ball's always going away from them i thought england's variety in their attack we talked about it before the game really showed up i thought they were high quality mo and ali set the tone there's no way the game plan would have been for mo to bowl four overs at the start but because the west indies players didn't really look to take him on they didn't really look to rotate him he was never under any pressure and, and that just allowed them then to get themselves into a bit of a hole play a big shot which was a half-hearted big shot and got themselves out and, and as I say no way in the world would they have been planning to have bowled four overs from him at the start no, one no. possibly two if the first one went really well but certainly not four and in many ways that summed up the, the difference between the two teams really I know it was an easy target because he, he's, he's slightly become this comedy figure now. He's, he's made himself. I mean, we know how destructive a batsman Chris Gale can be still, presumably. But number three doesn't feel right for me for Chris Gale because it, 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 there is that, the innings got to be sort of busy at that stage. And, and while he could come out perhaps swinging from the hip, opening the batting... Uh, you know, if you're if you're a wicket down, and maybe an early wicket down, as they were today, and you've got a chap again who can't, who isn't very mobile. Does does that? What do you think, Carlos? Is is, is can you do you think people might point at that that position for Gale and saying perhaps it doesn't feel quite right at three? Yeah, they will, and I think why why persons back home um, would be critical of his selection in the initial eleven is because you have Roston Chase, who is probably the perfect fit for the batting lineup. If you have Hetmeyer at three, um, you have Roston Chase at four. On one hand, it breaks up your left-handers. So if Leonard Simmons gets out first, you've got Evan Lewis, Hetmeyer, Puran. And we saw Bravo try to come up the order. Um, and with all due respect to Bravo, if we're going to have the situation with Bravo coming in at four or five, why not just play um, the right-hand batter who's in the most form along with Evan Lewis. He didn't play IPL, but he had a 15 warm game um, and he just got player of the tournament in the CPL. Um, you look over the course, the last two years, St. Lucia, Zook slash Kings were nowhere 
Harold used to qualify. He's come in, and he's not the only reason, but he's been a force for why they've been to two finals successively. Um, the way he bats, he adds a lot with the bowling as well. So if you're looking for someone that could potentially play the role that they need to be played, you can't look any further than Ross and Chase. Yeah. So eyes will be opened as to why you didn't start. But do you think, therefore, that Gale is vulnerable? I mean, do you think that actually that's the slot that, that Chase would come into? Funny enough, it could easily be between Gale and Puran because Puran has had a torrid time in the IPL, mm. um, but he keeps wicket. Yes. He's the vice captain. Um, so when you're thinking about enforcers in your middle order, you'd want one of the two of them. If they're on song, you'd love to have both of them any day of the week. They're both world-class players. And you can't discount what Gale has done um, over however long he's played. Um, but then you start to ask yourself, if you're trying to fit him in, if he's in your best 11. Um, at the top of the show, he said, look, Chris Gale at three can work. And I still do believe that. But with a misfiring Puran, mm. um, Hetmeyer didn't get much runs today. And the team not, or kind of short of runs as a unit and as individuals. You're then starting to look for the persons who are on form and try to build your team around that. And that is why Ross and Chase probably comes in next game. Um, for Gale. Mm, let's see. I mean, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, Paul? Because, you know, people, especially really what the Caribbean the cricket lovers are like, they'll be, they'll be phone-ins and be going berserk after this. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be, won't be very happy down there today. But, but I mean, you, I guess you try and avoid what might be interpreted as sort of a knee-jerk reaction after, you know, the first game's a disaster, OK. Um, but do you think West Indies must look at the way that they played and, and, and do, and, I don't know, adopt a new... A, a new attitude well I, I think I mean you know Carlos did say before the game he said about you know Chris batting whether he opens or he bats three I, I think he should open I, I think that's the obvious place and you mentioned earlier about his lack of mobility he's mm -hmm. running between the wickets you know you, 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 I think your you three four five have got to be flexible in terms of how they play and England showed today you know they didn't just necessarily go with the order that perhaps everyone thought they would do I, I, I like Moen Ali at three because I think he, he plays spin really well. I think these pitches are going to show that you've got to be flexible with your order. You've got to be flexible with your thinking. Look, the, the West Indies, I, I think Phil Simmons, you know, when he wakes up tomorrow morning, will be frustrated by the real lack of intent, by the lack of smartness that his players showed, because they are a smart team. We, we talk about their power and their intent. Well, they lack power. They lacked intent today. They lack smartness because for a team that have done really well in the T20 World Cups over the last 10 years, and they have done brilliantly well in the tournament, they've got a lot of experience. They've got a lot of know-how. And he will wake up tomorrow and say, let's put that one to one side. Let's not have a knee-jerk reaction. Let's not start panicking about selection and making lots of changes but let's actually let's play the way we want to play if after two more games having really played the way they want to play and the way that they're, they're very good at playing if that's not working then there may be an opportunity to think about changing your team but let's not be changing your team panicking after one game definitely not mm, okay let's hear from the man of the match Moen Ali uh, who's been speaking to a man who's got a delightful shirt on. I've never seen him wear a shirt quite as fancy as this before Mike Atherton the player of the match award which goes to Moen Ali today for getting through those uh, overs in the opening power play two for 17 he took as well as an excellent catch to dismiss Evan Lewis Mo well done I might talk about the catch first of all which must have pleased you it was an absolute cracker yeah I mean uh, it's always nice to catch someone like that I saw CJ running and I was going <laughs> to leave it to him because he's so fast and he's a great fielder but then it was on my side and I just stuck my hands out and stuck in the kind of moment that he thinks yeah it might just be my day after after a catch like that yeah it gives you confidence I think my first over was nice until the six and uh, it just gave me a bit more confidence and just to settle my nerves a little bit I guess I think that's the first time I'm right in saying that you've bowled four overs straight through uh, in a T20 international at the start of an innings. Given England's balance of the side today, they had to get those overs yeah. between you and Liam Livingston out, so that was the perfect start for you. Yeah, definitely, and obviously it helps with so many left-handers in their team, but um, I've been bowling all right. I've um, been bowling well in nets and stuff, so I felt quite confident, and I think because I've been playing cricket, I wasn't as nervous as probably some of the other guys, and I've, I was actually glad to get that first, first ball. I was going to ask about that, actually. You obviously had a very successful stint in the IPL, so you're coming in here on the back of cricket A, but be successful cricket and therefore full of confidence. Yeah, 100%. And I think the role in that team is uh, really good for me. I feel like I'm really involved with the bat and ball and, and in the field, actually. So, um, yeah, it's, it's great to be playing 
uh, all the way in those big games like the semi-finals or finals and then coming to a World Cup, I think it's a great preparation. Perfect start for you and the team. Many congratulations. Thank you very much. That's Mike Allerton. I urge you to look at his shirt uh, with Man of the Match <laughs> today, uh, Moeen uh, Ali. It's, it's been a Stato's day, really, hasn't it, today, Andy? I reckon, I mean, I, I lost it a bit towards the end there, but an average of about 12 runs per wicket we've seen today on these, on these two games, and uh, both blameless pitches. Uh, well, uh, yes, it'll be interesting to see how how the the scores evolve through the tournament. There have been a, a number of very low scores already, uh, and teams scoring it less than a run a ball five times already. The team batting first in this World Cup uh, has scored at under a run a ball, and that's as many as had happened in the previous three tournaments combined. Uh, both games today, South Africa 118 for nine from their 20, and then West Indies going at under four and over and being bowled out for 55. You mentioned Moeen Ali, uh, well, Aston mentioned uh, Moeen Ali bowling straight through. It's the first time an England spinner has bowled four overs straight through at the start of a T20 innings, and the first time any England bowler has uh, gone straight through four overs, opening the bowling in T20 cricket since 2006. Moeen, two for 17. Adil Rashid, four for two. Between them, six for 19. The second most wickets England spinners have taken in a T20 international. And he's the 55 all out. West Indies, second lowest score. The second lowest score England has bowled an opposition out for. And the third lowest total of uh, in a T20 World Cup uh, but only the second lowest of the last two days after the Netherlands were all out for 44 yesterday against uh, Sri Lanka and here's um, uh, we've seen a lot of old players today mm. Agus uh, 31 of the 44 players in the two games today were aged 30 or more so it's a young, and, young uh, people's game well, well in, the, in the England West Indies game half the players were 33 or over so it's, a, it's interesting T20 has extended a, a, a lot of uh, a lot of careers and here's something for, uh, uh, for for Carlos there were four sixes hit in the entire day today in two games combined which of course is as many as were hit in the last four balls you in four balls the last tournament <laughs> thanks Zoltz close the deal on a positive always we've had enough about those sixes Carlos let's <laughs> move on it's interesting that age isn't it? I mean this I suppose yeah, we've, the, maybe people have targeted the last year's T20 perhaps to finish and it's been postponed th- for this one maybe that's part of it or or coaches Paul have sort of worked on a bit of a cycle so you, you, you build some experience up and you get players of that sort of age but it, it certainly does destroy the myth that T20 is for, is for young players Absolutely and, and, and you know, Carlos will tell you it's about experience you want the most experienced people under pressure because this is a game that it's a fast thinking game it's about making the best decisions under pressure and the teams that come out on top make the best decisions under pressure so you want experience and, and you know, you, ideally you'd have a balance in every team you have of experience and youth but you know, I, I think the West Indies have had a very you know, a very settled way of playing the game. That's why they've been so successful for, you know, 10, 11, 12 years in this tournament at the at the, the main tournament. So, you know, I'm not surprised that they've got a lot of experience. And this England team has grown over the last five, six years. And again, there's a lot of experience in that team. And, you know, very quickly you go from being a, you know, a youngster who's coming into the side to four or five years later through that cycle as you say under one set of coaches and, and Chris Silverwood has looked at this and thought you know we've got two World Cups coming up in very short space of time let's make sure we give ourselves the best chance of winning and, and go with a bit of experience and, it, and it's working very nicely yeah we'll look ahead to England Bangladesh in just a second that's on uh, on Wednesday but before we uh, go forward let's just look back briefly Carlos at the South Africa Australia game uh, again another low scoring match wasn't it and uh, Australia seemed to be coasting really 80 for 3 in the 15th well they got over the line all right but they were five down with two balls to go so I don't know it wasn't necessarily a confident uh, performance and after watching the IPL this is one of the things that I feared for the World Cup will you get the best pitches possible will mm. you get a good quality of cricket and they're not asking for 200 plus scores but you want to see a real competitive 160, 165, 170. You want somebody to have a day out and push the score up to 180 and the other team get close or, or chase it down. As good as it is for the last two or three overs, the kind of not sure was going to be happening. You don't really want to see much of these games where one team get bundles out mm. um, for 120 or 119 and then the other team struggles to chase it. It doesn't make the best viewing, but you then also ask, has batsmanship declined? because of these pitches that have just been placid, bigger bats, smaller boundaries, everyone wants to see 200, and even that gets kind of boring. So I wonder if 
because of how T20 would have gone pre-COVID um, if batsmanship is actually on the decline and if these pitches aren't as bad as the scores um, say that they are. Yeah, be interesting to see how these two grounds go over the next fortnight, won't it? Andy, I think I saw you waving there. Well, ju just on the, on the two games today and the, the performance of the spinners, and you'd, you'd expect spin to be prominent uh, in a tournament played in the UAE and, and the spinners from in both games have been very hard to get away none of the spinners used have gone up more than a runner ball Maxwell and Zampa uh, picked up wickets uh, for Australia Maharaj and Shamsi although ended up on the losing side um, kept it tight and then um, even for, for the West Indies Hussain picked up his first two wickets ended up with two for 24 we mentioned how well England spinners are bowled and just a, just a, a further thing on that, that stat I mentioned about uh, teams scoring at less than a run and, uh, run and over South Africa and West Indies batting first uh, in uh, World Cup games and you've got to go back to the West Indies in 2010 for the last time teams ranked in the top eight went to under a runner ball when batting first in a World Cup game so it has been a, a very unusually slow scoring day mm. Paul let's just touch on uh, England Bangladesh then on Wednesday's tough group this now with Bangladesh and Sri Lanka both both popping up as a result of the, uh, the the qualifiers I thought Carlos made a great point this morning actually when he said that these qualifiers have been playing some cricket you know they've actually got used to the conditions we're playing cricket and so on and 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 maybe that gives them a little bit of a head start perhaps I think it does and, and I you know I heard you talking about this earlier you know I, I think you know, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka will come into this thinking we've got an advantage. We've played on these pitches. We've been winning games, which is really, really important. We've got a settlement in terms of our side. We know what our team looks like. While other teams are still working out what actually is their best combination on on these pitches. So I think it will be a tough game. I really do. And, you know, I think when you get through as a qualifier, you've got nothing to lose. You know, the pressure's almost off. You're now in that main tournament. All the pressure's off. All the expectation is on England to beat Bangladesh. Uh, and I think Bangladesh will enjoy that. They've got some very canny coaches working in their team. They've got fantastic experience in their side. We know that. So I, I think Bangladesh will really be fancying their chances against England in this game. Fancy, do you agree with that, Carlos? Yeah, I agree. And again, the the two teams that come in as qualifiers are spin heavy. Mm. And if you look at the other teams yeah. in the group, that is where the deficiency lies in batting. And you can look at all of the, all of the other four teams, um, West Indies, England, South Africa and Australia. All four of them struggle against spin. So not only do they have a bit of game time behind them, but their strength is kind of the kryptonite of who, who, who should be the quote-unquote stronger teams um, batting. So it will be an interesting proposition. And if you look at the way England stuttered to 56, <laughs> um, as Fabi mentioned, without showing much intent yep. and without dominating, um, the Bangladesh bowlers could be licking the, licking the lips watching their performance.